morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, being here. So I actually feel inadequate to be in this audience. I know very little about medicine, so I'm here to learn and uh, interact with you. So uh, yes, my talk title is uh, Guardian Angels Towards AI-Assisted Care. Um, let me first acknowledge Dr. Arno Milstein. He's my long-term collaborator in this project uh, or, or in this collection of projects that I will share with you. And together, um, this is a collaboration between the Stanford Engineering School and the Stanford Medical School, as well as two centers. One is Arnie's uh, Clinical Excellence Research Center, as well as a interdisciplinary program in AI-assisted care. So um, this is my grandma. She uh, is actually, as of now, 95 years old. She lives in a, a small city in southern China with only 12 million people. So uh, <laughs> um, between um, me and, and some of uh, her children, we call her every day. And she actually is still living independently by herself. So. I, I'm very close to my grandma, and she's very, very dear to me, and uh, I care a lot about her needs. And I know for my grandma in this age, um, in addition to all the you know, family bonds and everything, she cares a lot about quality of life. And uh, for her and for her family, like someone like me, we care about her health, her, you know, in this age, she, she has high blood pressure, for example. We worry about that. Um, we care about her needs for being independent and safe in her, um, in her home, and she wants to have independent living as long as possible. And uh, um, in the case of when she needs to go to hospitals and so on, we care about the kind of care she receives, you know, the high quality care. So this is really, um, but summarizes my motivation of starting to get into uh, medicine and collaborating medicine. I'm starting to think in this age of AI and uh, technology, what can we do to help people and clinicians to help uh, increase and improve the quality of care and improve uh, quality of people's lives. So uh, in today's talk, well, I'm not going to talk too much about medicine per se. Uh, my fellow uh, uh, fellow presenters on this panel will, will share with you the, the most awesome and latest uh, work they're doing. So I'm actually going to um, turn my attention to more the 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 well-being and 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 health of uh, of both for senior citizens as well as for patients who uh, stay in the hospitals. So, um, like I said, this is our hypothesis. Arnie and I actually spend a lot of time talking and thinking about what AI can help, and we've arrived at this very important hypothesis for the work that uh, we're doing now, and I'm going to share with you. So it's the guardian angel hypothesis. Artificial intelligence technology can help better the workflow of healthcare. So this is, uh, for the rest of the talk, I'll try to give you some, uh, shed some light on how this would work. But here is an example scenario, right? So um, this is a um, um, mock recording of a senior living independently in his studio. And uh, uh, during this process of trying to work together on, on AI assistive care, we talked a lot to uh, clinicians and health workers um, in senior um, centers and senior homes to try to learn and understand what are the needs that clinicians as well as the 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 uh, the people the the elders need in order to assure a high quality independent and safe living and there is a long list of things that uh, clinicians and family members and the elders themselves worry about or think about and they range from eating patterns sleep patterns uh, if they fall if they have movement uh, changes, um, unstable gestures, uh, uh, early signs of dementia, such as front door loitering, um, uh, day and night uh, activity pattern reversals, fluid intake, and all this. And uh, 
And the truth is that a lot of the clinicians we talk to tell us they don't really have a good way of finding out. And having a grandma who is 95 years old, I really can relate to that. We call her every day. We ask her about what she does, but we don't really know other than that 15 minute phone call, what's really happening. It's really hard to tap into the, the continuous um, uh, beh uh, behavior and activities. So um, this was one of the early inspirations of our, our work um, and collaboration, getting into this space of uh, uh, technology because we do a lot of modern computer vision, and we have sensors, smart sensors, like cameras, like depth sensors, like thermal sensors, that might help us to um, get into, uh, uh, help us to monitor or watch like a guardian angel of what's happening. That's really our inspiration and intuition. There is something that computer vision can do to help. And as we talk more and more to clinicians, we realize across the board of healthcare, from um, just living at home all the way to emergency room, to operation room, to intensive care, to hospital ward, that need of understanding what's happening, what are the activities, and, 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 and ensure the quality of, of care, ensure that the patient is safe, that need is tremendous. Uh, we, you know, in, in, you know, hand hygiene uh, is, is one need that's across all medical units. Um, triaging in the uh, e uh, e e emergency department and, and understanding how the people's condition are changing in the waiting room is another big concern. Or um, uh, protocols in the intensive care unit, are we really following the central line insertion protocols? How is the patient's uh, condition? All this seem to require, um, you know, uh, or all this seem to um, be areas that could benefit from better um, and continuous uh, um, observation. So, so we start to realize there is a critical need in healthcare uh, environment where we could track, understand, and when needed, modify human behaviors. So for patients, we want to understand if they have their pain level, their mobility, their vitals, and you know their, their, their living conditions. For clinicians, hand hygiene, bundle protocols, patient interactions, operation procedures, and the list is just on and on. With this needs in mind, uh, we look at what's the current situation, what's the current method. Well, the truth is, there isn't much of a current method. There is a lot of um, um, procedures and protocols designed about you know, to use people to watch people. And that's extremely expensive. It's sparse, just like I call my grandma at most for 10 minutes, 15 minutes per day. It, I don't get to know the 24-7 um, behavior. Um, it's erroneous, you, you know, thinking about uh, one clinician's assessment of the patient's uh, uh, mobility level is very, could be very different from another uh, clinician's assessment. It's subjective and it's really costly. Or this is, there's, our hypothesis says AI might be able to help here. AI as a technology that's becoming more and more mature and capable, it's, it can be real time, can be continuous, it's accurate if we have, the, the, if we train the models well, it's relatively objective and it's cost effective. And this is very much on our mind, on our mind when we think about improving healthcare, as well as keeping the cost down. So that's the, that's the big picture. In, in fact, the, the, the most important uh, picture uh, slide of this talk is this one. Then the rest of the talk, I'll show you a little bit of the basic technology that we are using to uh, um, to understand. Uh, the environment as well as the human um, behavior, but uh, um, also just quickly show you a couple of projects that's going on. So, um, so we're going to use computer vision technology to see and understand the visual world. 
And uh, like Gil already mentioned, much of today's computer vision technology relies on this technique called deep learning, which is uh, a neural network architecture to learn to observe and understand the world, for example, to recognize cats, since they're everywhere, um, um, to detect objects in a scene. Um, sometimes the objects can be quite cluttered. In the hospital room, you can imagine, or in a, in a, in a studio, there are a lot of objects. Um, uh, we can um, detect, uh, you know, meaning of uh, the, the 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 people, the the, the environment, the the background objects. Um, we can even use this uh, machine learning, deep learning technology to communicate with a person who might not be there at the scene by generating sentences like uh, like this one or sentences like this one. This is a machine generated sentence of, of the of the thing. Um, we can um, actually get into the more details of a visual scene and talk about specific areas. Think about uh, a senior person who is uh, working in the kitchen. We can focus on what she is doing with the cooking and the objects she's using. Is she cooking lots of meat or taking fruits and, and so on? So these are just examples. And we can also work with video domain by looking at uh, different behaviors. For example, this is a YouTube video showing uh, what kind of, just look at the first line of the, of the label, what kind of uh, sports game that people are doing. Uh, this is a, another um, work we're doing that shows how to uh, zoom into different people in a, in a visual scene. You can think this is, could be useful in a hospital situation uh, and looking and, and understand what their individual behavior is. Um, this is a particular work we're doing in the hospital to track people without revealing their identity if privacy is a concern, we use only depth sensor to track people and under understand their behavior. Um, this is another uh, project we're doing in a, in a actually uh, real world European train station of tracking many, many people and look at their behavior, which might be useful in a busy hospital or in emergency departments. So that was, those were the basic technology that we are developing in our lab to understand and see the world. And what are we applying them for? One project we're doing is with the Lucille Packer Children's Hospital of hand hygiene in, in, in hospitals. And people here might know hand hygiene is a huge important issue in healthcare. It, it's, it costs billions and billions of dollars in hospitals and governments to, um, w to, to combat um, you know, bad hand hygiene, which will result in to hospital acquired infection. And uh, we have worked with one hospital unit in the Lucio Packer Children's Hospital to put sensors, depth sensors everywhere inside and outside of the patient room um, to cover almost all the areas and to monitor uh, to, to begin to monitor how clinicians behave um, in terms of hand hygiene. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, by looking at this, we can provide um, much better assessment of hand hygiene behavior and solutions. And another project is a smart ICU project. In ICUs, uh, this is the most high uh, mortality unit, and we're hoping to uh, help uh, to help use the modern sensors. Uh, this is the Stanford ICU to help uh, doctors and clinicians to assess patient situation, such as sedation level, pain, mobility, and also to help. Uh, um, um, to automatically document nurse activities to reduce the burden of documentation. And uh, I'm not going to get into the last one, which is senior independent living, which is very dear to my heart. And we're collaborating this with a senior center in San Francisco called Unlock to, uh, to assess the, the living situation of seniors and, uh, and help uh, clinicians to make better assessment of what's their uh, condition. So um, there's a 
lot to be done in AI-assisted healthcare. I think this is really a new, exciting area uh, that uh, we're just starting to crack open the doors. Uh, I really welcome more uh, people to work in this. And, uh, and personally, I'm very grateful that I'm working with really brilliant students and postdocs at, uh, at Stanford to, to make this happen. Thank you.